We developed a sense of urgency, a sense of ownership in the product that we were developing. You always had that on the back of your mind that you were fulfilling not only a job, but it was something that the national security and the warfighter needed. At that time, the Berlin Wall was still there, and the Russian airplanes were far exceeding our airplanes, so we needed an airplane to beat the Russians. We were at a point in, in uh, the world whereby everything was getting to be parity. In other words, air superiority was not enough, it was air dominance. So this was the turn uh, at this point in time to say, I need a new fighter, a replacement for the F-15. We had a requirement to make the F-119 practically invisible uh, to the radar, and at the same time, provide an afterburning engine that produced 35,000 pounds of thrust so that the F-22 could accelerate uh, faster than any other airplane on the planet. And that had never been done before. We were um, running an engine that had um, t a temperature environment that we had never designed to. We were working with materials that we were developing. We were developing unique coatings for the engines. The thrust vectoring capability that the nozzle brings and the integration of that into the F-22 Prior to that, the engine just pushed the airplane around. With the F-22, it became an integral part of the flight control system. This was so new and so different that it became exciting. And the plans and the thought process from top management all the way down to the floor, there, there, were, there was a beehive of activity that was really contagious. This engine was going to be the most maintainable engine that we've ever done here. And he was wonderful in placing components, one deep, so you didn't have to take off 14 things to get at the one thing you wanted to replace. All the plumbing is on the bottom half of the engine. It's color-coded. It takes only uh, six hand tools to work on this F-119 engine, and it comes apart very cleanly in modules. Frank would demonstrate that in a frontline scenario where you are threatened by chemical or germ warfare, uh, you could, in the hazmat gear, maintain the engine on the externals with the six wrenches, uh, remove hardware, put it back on. There are countless uh, airmen that I talk to all the time that owe a debt of gratitude to Frank because of uh, the way he designed this engine. We were working in a competition. We were head-to-head -head with General Electric. We had proved to the Air Force and the government that in fact Pratt Whitney was the right choice to make. Everybody was watching that competition at Pratt and Whitney. And so you'd hear about how we were doing at flight test and how the GE engine was doing. And you know, they had issues with their engine. And I said, the competition's very difficult, but we can do it. They brought us out to the tent in front of the building. And, uh, and John, you know, we were all out there and we did not know, we literally did not know if we had won or lost. We've spent all that time leading up to that decision, you know, preparing and, and reviewing and proposing and understanding. And to get to that critical point when you're going to know, you know, what your fate will be over the next, you know, 20 years, 30 years, it, it was a little scary. We won the honor to power the ATF. I can't describe to you how happy people were. Because you have to understand, this thing started in the early 80s. You had to sacrifice lots of things. You know, time with your family. A lot of personal things went, went by the wayside in order to focus to make this program, this product, a success. You know, people were crying. They were so happy. Uh, it, was, it was a great day. They made the announcement. It still chokes me up, by the way. Uh, place went wild. Absolutely. Hugging, kissing, wow. I remember the next day uh, driving into the, onto the campus and a banner had been put up over the entrance saying, welcome, welcome to F-119 Fighter Engine Country. And you know, I think everybody felt a lot of pride as, as, we, as we went under that banner.
This team, I don't care what it was, we could do anything. Everyone worked on the same vision. Everyone understood what we were trying to do. We all had a single focus. Everyone was passionate about it. They're very awesome. It was an honor to work with the team. Uh, people call me the father of the engine. I was really the cheerleader. I gave the credit to the women and the men that did this. For an engine manufacturer, we always hold our breath on the first flight. But the airplane took off without flaw, and there was elation by all the people that were gathered. She's at the end of the runway. You see it down there, you're waiting, and you, you, it's got a real clear view at uh, Marietta. It's a naval air station. There's an F-16 chase plane that is set up and coming in for photographs and all of that as this aircraft takes off. The F-22, its power comes down that runway and takes off, and the F-16 couldn't keep up. It brought a lump to your throat, a tear to your eye to see the aircraft fly. Uh, watching the engines on the test stand is, is wonderful, but seeing the aircraft actually fly was uh, truly an inspiring event. It's pride. It's Pratt power had the eagle on the side. You know, this is us. First flight, you know, was a, a big milestone. Um, a, you know, very proud of that. The first uh, production engine delivery was a big milestone. Initial service release was a key milestone. We were essentially done with development. We were ready to proceed into a full rate production. You validate the engine, you test the engine, and the F-119 was tested arguably more than any other engine that I've been affiliated with, and I've been around a lot of, a lot of development programs. Once we received uh, the initial operational capability from the U U.S. government, that was a big milestone because it meant now that we were an operational program, that that engine, that weapon system, could be in the fight. We stood up Langley, you stood up Holloman, you stood up uh, uh, Hickam at the end, we stood up all the operational bases that ultimately are flying uh, the airplane, and then it's just, and it's just demonstrating that the system is ready to go to war. So we have eight bases with uh, Pratt & Whitney employees supporting the F-119 program. These guys are on the tip of the spear every day, uh, working with the wing commanders and the maintenance commanders to keep the fleet fully supported. We're not creating an engine for today. We're creating an engine that's going to have many derivatives and that's going to last for decades and decades. We did it as a team. We did it together. Um, we were all, everyone who worked on this, they are all superstars. Uh, they should be so proud of what they did. It just, it just brings almost tears to my eyes to, to want to thank everybody. That's why I light up about the 119, because maybe some piece of what I did um, and some piece of what my team did to make that engine what it is, is part of history for Pratt & Whitney. So we have a twin engine F-22 that flies out there that's flo flown over 200,000 hours. We've taken every one of the lessons learned from that experience and we've applied it to the single engine F-35 that today will power eight partner countries, all three services, for the next 50 years. My message to everybody on the F-119 team, congratulations on a job well done. The efforts that were put into this as a total team uh, within Pratt & Whitney with the government is something that will has not been duplicated before and was not. And the product that we have is uh, in an engine that's widely respected, it's probably the best engine in the world, uh, is due to your efforts. Congratulations for a job well done.